being uncomfortable, like I am now, <laughs> like I have been all morning, it seems, forgetting the first song, moving through. You know, you guys are so generous with me. I just so appreciate it. But today, this talk about being uncomfortable, the lessons in uncomfortability. Has anybody here felt uncomfortable? <laughs> yeah? I, I'm, not, I'm talking to the choir here, right? You do, yeah. And behind me there as well, I've got a hand waving in behind. And that, that's the thing. But the uncomfortability, that is where our growth is. When we step into that place of being uncomfortable, it is birthing something else through us to change, to shift that new thought, that new possibility. So in our um, monthly guides this morning, I was reading through, and I thought this was a perfect example of that uncomfortability. It says, life is full and uncomfortable, but birth itself is a shift from the warm, nurturing, safe place, that safety, that womb place, into cold, terrifying chaos. And it's our very first experience of that divine discomfort. That place where, I don't know about any of the other ladies who've delivered a baby here, but sometimes it has, uh, it takes a little bit of time to go through that process. And it's they're, they're comfortable where they are. They don't want to come through. And it can be, a, I would imagine, a scary place to go through. But they do because they're expanding into that next expansion of what they are to become. Of what they are to become. What we've all become. Where we've all moved through. So what are the gifts of the power of discomfort? It is that growth period that place of moving out of what was and accepting what is and knowing that you are meant for something more. It is we are birthing something new every moment. We're always at choice to make a new decision, to make a new choice, to have a new thought that comes through to us. We can be stuck in our old stories and you know, the thing about discomfort, I find, sometimes I choose it. I choose to be in that uncomfortable place. Because you know what? I know it. I know it. I know what's going to happen there. I know how I'm going to feel. And it's scary to step outside of that, to make that shift, because then I'm not in con control. <laughs> am I ever right I'm not in that place of that I feel that I'm in the driver's seat it's that place where I've got to surrender and let go and move through into that flow of life into trust into faith and I know my faith and my trust get questioned every so often and yet it's stepping back into it it's stepping back into the practice it is going into prayer. It is going into meditation. It is going into contemplation, reading, whatever it is for you. Each person has a different way of practicing the presence. And that presence is what is within you. That divine peace that is always right here. What does Ernest Holmes always say? It's closer than your neck, your heartbeat. And I love what Jill always describes it as her best friend within. And that's the thing. Sometimes I think we forget. We forget that it is always here. And I think last week, you know, it's interesting. I get to talk about being uncomfortable after Reverend Terry's talk last week. I wasn't going to say anything. I just thought, maybe I'll just let it all go. <laughs> but yet, but that's the thing. Sometimes we come into these places and it's uncomfortable. And especially in our spirituality. There's testing going on, and we can take on a belief. We can leave it aside. We're always at choice of what we want to define the G blank D word as, right? We don't have to use it in the way that it has been used in the previous, in different religions, in different modalities. So 
I was thinking about, okay, uncomfortable. What makes me uncomfortable? What are we uncomfortable here in our community? And one thing came up with, well, technology, (laughs) you know, and my people on Zoom may be uncomfortable to hear that we're thinking of maybe just moving away from our Zoom platform and going just to live on YouTube and Facebook because they have no idea how much stuff we go. Like I'm, I'm up here sweating a little because of all the running around that we do beforehand. But this is just an idea. It's not 100%. It's not for sure. But let me tell you, I'm uncomfortable with it. I'm uncomfortable with switching because you know what? When we're on Zoom, I have my people there. I can't see you all right now. But I, there's that comfort level that, okay, this is good. But moving out past that, that is where I'm going to be uncomfortable What if people don't want to come anymore? What if they don't like, they don't have Facebook, they don't know how to use YouTube. These stories that go through my brain are like, like on fire sometimes. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then how do I make that decision? How do I decide whatever is that is making me uncomfortable? How do I move through it? So the first step for me is accepting, okay, this is, this is a, this is an uncomfortable place. What do I want to do with it? What makes most sense? How is it going to serve and help the most people? Okay. Then that idea comes because that is that universal absolute idea that comes in that drops down. And then I think, okay. And then I pray on it and I work through it. And that's where I am right now on it. People, I'm in that prayer stage and on the meditation stay stage about what is next how do we expand this teaching and grow as a community and are we just keeping ourselves in the same place all the time and sometimes we need to push past that we need to push past that place of comfortability but you know what happens next we go into resistance I don't know, has anybody felt resistance about anything? Yes, okay, I'm getting a few hands up. I don't know about you on Zoom, but, right, that place. And there's that saying, what we resist persists. What we resist persists. So if we resist maybe growing because we like our community, we like how cozy and cuddly we all have become with each other, right, then we're we're stopping ourselves. We're stopping our growth. We're stopping from meeting other people who may bring in new ideas, who may bring in other things for us. So it's moving past that resistance. And where this resistance connects to that uncomfortability is because we have those hidden beliefs. Those beliefs, those limiting beliefs that stop us and keep us in that smaller place. And it doesn't matter whether it's here at the center, whether it's at work, maybe it's your relationship with family. Where are we at that we're trying to burst free? You know, you think of the seed, we have that idea, okay, I want to have a better relationship, but it's uncomfortable, I have to change, I have to do something different, but then it goes into that creative medium into our heart space, and then we think about it, we move through, and then we have a demonstration of it of whatever it is that we're planting in. And sometimes that planting may be fear. We're like, oh, it's never going to work. Oh, my goodness. And then we focus on that, and guess what happens? It doesn't work. But if we, in, in our Change Our Thinking, Change Our Life class, we're having people are doing their affirmations and changing, working on changing their thoughts, and we're getting some amazing demonstrations. I, I, lo- I hope, David, I'm... He's not going to mind if I share, but he even had a simple demonstration of regarding he wanted to become a better bowler. And guess what happened? He became a better bowler. And what it was is he, he hurt his one arm. So he was using his other arm. He had to use his left hand instead of his right. But he went into that space of being in that positive. Okay, I can change this. I can move through this. So he was moving out of that resistance of that I can only bowl with my right hand into his left hand. And, you know, the uncomfortableness, another way to put it, is that sometimes we stay in the pain. 
we stay in the pain of a situation, whether it's a relationship, a job, because we, again, it's that peace. We know it. We feel it. We're comfortable with it. And shifting out of that pain is hard or it can be, right? That's the story I tell myself is, oh, changing, moving through is going to be hard. But yet that's where the joy and the juices sometimes is when we embrace the change, when we embrace something new rather than always staying the same, that the new thought, you know, it was for me, I, um, I was always growing up, you know, you hear these stories about, oh, Tamara, you can never do this. You can never do that. And it was about painting. And I think I've told you this story before. So I decided I wanted to paint. So I took a course, what I do all the time, I took another course, which I love to do. And uh, I went down and I painted and I actually now have a painting hanging in my living room as you walk through. And but that uncomfortableness of walking through the process and even hanging it up was a real challenge because it's still when new people come into my home, I'm like, eh, it's kind of an it's an abstract. So it's you know, I'm not saying I'm the best painter or anything, people, please don't get me wrong. And it's but it's just that process of trying something new and taking on that new identity. Yes, I can be creative. And that's what Ernest Holmes says. He says, let me find this one here. That change, oh, no, that's Emmett Fox. Oh, I can't find the one. Oh, sorry. The comfort zone is the great enemy to creativity. Moving beyond it necessitates uh, an intuition which in turn configures new perspective and conquers fear. And sorry, that was Dan Stevens on his, it's uh, a paper called My Week on the Porch. But the comfort zone is that great enemy. And I don't know if you've all heard about the story of IBM, or I, I believe it was IBM, and I, you can look this up, but about the theory of the comfort zone where they wanted to grow their company. So they took all the people that were on the, they had areas that had their top salespeople. And they had, of course, the areas where they had the bottom salespeople. So they thought, you know what, we're going to do an experiment. We're going to change that around. So they took the people from the bottom sales positions and put them into the territories where the top salespeople were. Thinking that, you know, of course, that the bottom salespeople, then those would go up and then their company would continue growing. But guess what happened? So the one thing that we thought would happen is they thought that would happen is that the bottom salespeople, that territory, they would increase. And guess what? They did. But the interesting piece was the people that were put into the top sales category and into the top, top territories they drop down to where they were before because that being that successful and being at that level was pushing their comfort zone. It was too much for them. So they went back to what they knew, to what was comfortable. So in our life, where are we, you know, they say sometimes living outside of your comfort zone it, it, or they say everything you want is just outside of your gum comfort zone. But there's also knowing there's that little window where you can just take those baby steps to push yourself just that little bit outside of it. Learning this new technology <laughs> session has definitely pushed me outside of it. Even becoming a minister totally has pushed me outside of my comfort zone. This was not anything I kind of imagined when I was sitting at the bank that this is what I'd be doing one day, you know? So going to class and, and, and stepping into, okay, I can learn something, but then resisting learning it and not maybe handing a paper in on time so that I would do, you know, so I could kind of back out. But then it's like, no, stepping back in, stepping out. And it would just keep going through that. And that's the thing about life, embracing those changes, embracing those hard things that we have to do. So 
the first thing that we're talking, we talked about is, you know, is that uncomfortableness and that's our pain and our pain points maybe are things that challenge us, but it's embracing that and then going in and embracing that change. And then it's talking about allowing that resistance and noticing it. So what is the third thing to talk about? Well, that's when we get to transform into our conscious choice into a conscious choice of what we want next. So Science of Mind teaches that a change is a natural part of life and that embracing it can lead to growth and transformation. By shifting our thoughts and beliefs to align with the creative power of the universe, we can navigate change with a greater ease and open ourselves to new ideas. So I was thinking about that and I went, well, what is that? Oh yeah, that is the flow of life. That's when we stop resisting and we ask for the gifts and what is in this uncomfortable, what is in this resistance, what am I here to learn today? And then shifts happen. Things start to flow. It's easy enough. I, you know, use a a friend of mine, her daughter, you know, was having a tough time and she couldn't find a job. So she started working with a coach. She started to be more open. So the next thing you know, she found a really great job and then she was still living at home and she wanted to move out. And the next thing you know, she found like in Vancouver, it's pretty hard to find places to live that are not so expensive. So she found that. And then she also then next, she was opening up even more. So then she found a partner. You know, so her life from taking those few steps of change, of changing her way of believing about herself and changing, stepping into that uncomfortableness of she didn't like where she was and knew she needed to change. She moved into that next phase of being and she's blossoming. And then where in our life do we do that? I'm sure everybody's gone through something here. I would imagine at some point in our lives, maybe a difficult situation, right? But what, but we're still here. Each of you got dressed this morning. Each of you showed up here Sunday to hear whatever's going to happen here. (laughs) And some days I wonder, but that's the, but that's the piece. You're stepping into it. You've made that commitment to yourself to grow. You made that commitment to yourself to maybe think about something differently. You shifted into that next extension of yourself. You made a conscious choice this morning. So I was also thinking about, um, I had so many ideas that I wanted to talk about uncomfortability because too, this um, in Canada and the US, it is Black History Month. And I was thinking about the chance I was talking to Reverend Savannah who's here with us today. She came up and visit from Seattle. And we're talking about the difference between Canadians and Americans. And there's a few differences. And she said, you know, we were talking about racism and it being black. Oh, um, Black History Month, thank you. And I said, yeah, we do have that in Canada. And she said, oh, I didn't think you, you know, you had racism here in Canada. (laughs) Well, maybe she didn't say it, but she said, you guys. And so I said, yeah, but it's just because we're much more polite about it. Right. And we, we laughed about that because, but that is a thing that we sometimes sweep under the rug. And right now on our Facebook and Instagram page, we have stepped into the 64 days of nonviolence put on by Mahat Gandhi and um, Martin Luther King Jr. So every day we're putting a new thing on our Facebook about way we can spread nonviolence and be aware with kindness. I think one of the first days was even smiling, smiling at somebody. Because we just don't know how that might just change somebody else's day. You know, it's that piece when we, we step into it. So for conclusion here, what we want to do, I think, with this uncomfortability is, I think, have these conversations. 
right? That goes back to having that conversation with Terry, with Reverend Terry, what last month or last week, last year, I don't know when it was, <laughs> it's a long time ago. And, or talking about racism, talking about the hard things, the things that are going on around the world, but talking about it in a way to uplift and change things. Because when we start changing here ourselves and doing our work, that again spreads out and does the ripple into the larger world. So embrace change and recognize that change is a natural part of life. And it's an opportunity to grow. And it's, you know, the one word I love is willingness. You know, we might not change right now, but if we're willing, that puts us that one step closer to doing something different. So if we just even today can embrace that willingness is so good. And then the second thing is that we want to release those limiting beliefs, those beliefs that keep us small, those identities and labels that we might put on ourselves that hold us back from embracing that change. So it's challenging those negative thoughts. It's having those affirmations that I'm going to be a great bowler with my left hand, right? It's changing those places that I can find that job I want. I can find that partner I'm looking for. I know that I am whole, perfect, and complete right here, right now. I do not need to change anything. So it's releasing those beliefs uh, that hold us back and stepping into it, those empowering beliefs. And then it's cultivating our conscious awareness. It's developing our practice. I know when I'm off, I haven't done my meditation or I haven't done my prayer in the morning. I know when I haven't done what I need to do to ground myself. When I move through the day, I was talking to Jill the other day and I've told this story before. It's that if I don't do my spiritual practice, it's like I've stubbed my toe in the morning and then I hit my funny bone or I've knocked my head on a door. But it's, I find that with my spirituality, things get, I get pulled off my ground. I get knocked over a lot easier than if I've even taken 10 minutes of the day to say, okay, Tamara, breathe. Remember who you are. Know that you are whole, perfect, and complete. Know the truth of yourself. And each of us can do that. We can each ground into that knowing of who we really, really are. So think of ourselves as you know, if we compare it to nature, so this is what I wanted to say about Ernest Holmes quote that I did the wrong quote earlier, but who knew that but me, but that's okay. <laughs> um, nature will not let us stay in any one place too long. She will let us stay just long enough to gather the experience necessary to the unfolding and the advancement of our soul. Nature demands the change in order that we may advance. That's in chapter 23, page 321 of Science of Mind. But it's so true. You think of that dandelion that will force its way up through the cement to grow, to bloom. And nature does not allow us to stay stagnant. It is always calling forth to change, to move forward. So we can be in resistance to that or we can lean into it. We can lean into that change. And it may be feeling a little nerve wracking, but that's when we have our practitioners that are here to pray for you. That is when you have a friend or you come on Sunday and you have this conversation. You're like, oh, I can look at life differently. I can look at life differently. So leaning into your affirmative prayer as a practice, leaning into meditation, leaning into affirmations. You know, have, has anybody heard the saying, treat and move your feet? Yeah. Some of our science of mind people. So our prayer that we do here is we call it a spiritual mind treatment, but basically it is what is another word is affirmative prayer. So when we say treat and move your feet, basically we're saying pray and then go and do something. 
right? We're shifting our way of, of, of being. I think that's all I have to say. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what the heck? I know that doesn't happen very often, but let's just take this into prayer. As I breathe in, knowing truth, that there is one life, one love, one universal divine mind that is operating right here, right now. And it is good. It is beauty. It is joy. It is love. So today I know that I am one with that. And I know with conviction that each person here listening to this is one with that. So today I claim change as my friend. I claim the joy of the unfoldment of what is next. I claim that creativity that is offered to me here right now. I know that I am love expressed in this spirit human form. I know that I am whole, perfect, and complete. And again, as I know this for myself, I know it with conviction for each of you. There is nothing outside of us that needs to change for us to be happy. It is all here. So I tune in and listen to that friend within and know that love conquers all. I know that love is everything. So with that, I'm grateful for this day, grateful for this time together in community, grateful for this experience of life. So I let these words go into that law of mind that always reflects back to me. I let it be. I let it go and ask you to join me in saying, and so it is.